The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. This is what it looked like on the beach at Bayhead, Northern Ocean County this past Saturday morning, a little after sunrise. Bass blowing up on bunker sand eels and sea herring just a bit outside. Of course, that in itself is not the biggest holiday surprise of the week. Do you believe in miracles? Why, yes, Virginia, beach blitzes do exist in South Jersey, because just as that opening video was being shot this past Saturday morning, stripers were blowing up in the surf to the south, the deep south, talking Cape May County. But it's Thursday, December 21st, and I'm at my desk this week. I have a lot to do in the next few days. Got some big travel plans uh, coming up on Sunday. And I did consider doing this week's video fishing forecast from down along the boardwalk in Wildwood, because that's where the real December magic occurred this past Saturday. Colin Christner, that's C-H-R-I-S-T-N-E-R. He emailed this shot from Saturday and said, quote, Today was a day that I'll remember for the rest of my days, starting off in North Wildwood, 10 a.m., on literally a gut feeling. Boy, did that pay off, Colin. Big bass on adult and cupcake bunker on the beach got my personal best at around 11 a.m. About an hour and a half later, he had a second personal best. Now, Colin said there were plenty of fish in the Wildwood Rip, and he and a handful of other anglers had them mostly all alone in a blitz that lasted roughly five hours. Colin added, quote, I would hope I have many more days like this to come, but I've got to say, it'll be hard to beat. By beach and by boat. In fact, Johnny M. Thompson Jr. said they were right off the beach, just a little bit outside. Also heard from Ben Scholl, who had a good fish from the Wildwood Madness. Ryan Matichik as well, who in addition to the photo said he had to run some video on this action because it was so extraordinary. He said, quote, probably landed 275 fish. Yes, I have a clicker on the boat that keeps count, 275. Ryan said uh, he had reports from sunup to sundown on metal lips, flutter spoons, and live lining. No trolling at all. Some good fish in the mix, too, as I mentioned. And as Larry Ashbridge shows with this sizable striped bass, also off of Cape May County, sunny and warm this past Saturday, ideal conditions for hitting the striper coast here at the Jersey Shore, which includes Monmouth, Ocean, Atlantic, and now Cape May County. And it was still happening on Sunday, too, for some. Eric Lewandowski at North Wildwood near the inlet. Yes, he knows he, knows he was a day late. He admitted that, but he said, quote, the fish were still around feeding on adult bunker, heavy swim shads and bucktails were the ticket. What else is there to say? Clearly, Santa Claus is real. How, otherwise, how do you account for this South Jersey miracle of 23? As South Jersey field editor Anthony Califano reminded me this Saturday, December 16th was National Underdog Day. Thus, and appropriately enough, in the spirit of another rather, the rather mystical, uh, magical beach gnome known as Bob the Garbage Man, this past Saturday will for forever be known as the National Underdog Day Blitz of 2023. Truth is indeed stranger than fiction. And then came Monday, blowing a gale, pushing heavy, heavy surf up along our sandy beaches, running big swells through, through local inlets like Manasquan, which was completely closed out around the time of the midday high tide on Monday. My friend John Tiedemann, professor at Monmouth University, he said Surfline on Sunday forecast Ocean County swells at 18 to 20 for Monday morning. The NOAA Marine forecast pegs swells at 14 to 18, I believe, in the morning. But these were massive, massive swells in the morning uh, coming into Manasquan Inlet, closing off the inlet, pounding the jacks with relentless force, minor coastal flooding throughout New Jersey with more damage to the northeast up in New England. I don't know how these readers are terrible when you have so much hair. I need a, I, I need a shave. Northwest winds curled those swells back to epic conditions. Surfers found the best waves in decades. This shot uh, taken, I believe, of Brandon T. I uh, hope I got that name right. 
uh, might be the defining image from Monday's swell taken by seaside surf photographer Dave Nilsson. It reminds me of why the challenge of riding big waves isn't on this fat man's bucket list. But day of the century, according to most, this perhaps even last. And it'll be interesting to see how quickly things clean up, uh, where those stripers might be found just, just after it's all done. But Northwest, after the storm and through Wednesday, it forced those waves to jack up, peel, beautiful faces for surfers, look like 20-foot faces as, as far as I'm concerned. And according to NOAA Marine Weather, winds go uh, north Thursday, today, light and variable perhaps Friday and Saturday, and northerly on Christmas Eve. Actually, with lows uh, at the Jersey Shore um, only down into the mid-30s, uh, it's certainly worth a few casts on Saturday and Sunday if you can get up there to the beach. Now, while you've got the weekend ahead of you to nail down those final Christmas gifts and bake up a few special treats for the jolly old elf himself, we're also staring straight ahead at another year, another brand new year. And 2024 is just, I mean, a little over a week away. And that means it's show season for the elves over at the Fisherman Magazine. First up, with visions of blitzing stripers still fresh in our heads, the Wildwood Fishing and Boating Expo comes Saturday and Sunday, January 6th and 7th. It's a great event held every year right there on the boardwalk. The Fisherman Magazine will be there. Jenny Ackerman, is she's doing a seminar or two. And of course, we'll have a nice gift with your new or renewing subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. This year, you'll, you, you'll get the Shorehold gift certificate by becoming a Fisherman member at the shows where staffs have a booth, where our staff has a booth, plus a brand new Tsunami iPop Topwater Popper, one of my favorites this past season along the sod banks in the back for striped bass. Of course, that is the January edition you see there. Another gift this show season at Wildwood, uh, the New York Boat Show, DelVal Surf Anglers, uh, and a couple of other shows. Uh, that edition is out this week. In your mailbox, if you're already a subscriber, um, it's also on local newsstands at this point in the week as well. It's the Fisherman Magazine's annual Boat Buyer's Guide. Over 50 manufacturers listed with some of the latest, greatest fishing platforms you'll find in 2024. You'll probably see a few of these gems next month at the Javits Center in New York. I hear the folks from Valhalla, they're going to be having, having a christening, a kickoff later on this season at the Atlantic City Boat Show. The fishermen will be there as well. That's in February. So some really great information, news coming from the world of boats and you'll get that in this January edition. In the New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition, you'll also find in our table of contents some more articles to get you uh, into the first quarter. Uh, you'll get to meet the Dreamboat Fishing Champ from 2023, get the lowdown on midwater trout, our midwinter trout from the Pocono Outdoors guy himself, a do-it-yourself workbench piece on albi lures, Frank Mahalik's Titanic Tog piece, and a brief overview of what's in store for 24, fluke, sea bass, porgies, and striped bass. Now, a friend of mine told me uh, that uh, I got some knickers in a twist in some internet washroom uh, about striped bass management. Honestly, I've never given at any point um, my preference uh, on whether or not I like this 28 to 31 inch slot limit. The only thing I have said about this is I didn't like the process, right? I mean, how can you support a management process that ignores all public input and utilizes flimsy data? Even if it does give the keyboard warriors what they want without having to leave their couch to attend a meeting, without speaking publicly in front of the public or participating in the process. Those are the things that'll land you on the naughty list. But I digress. And it is, after all, the season of holiday cheer. Ho, 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 But you'll find a fairly comprehensive breakdown on these four critically important recreational species in that January edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's out this week, just in time for your reading pleasure this holiday weekend. So, with just a few days left before Christmas, and most of you like, uh, well, you know, so many uh, fishing dudes, uh, you probably haven't even started your Christmas shopping yet, but you've been thinking about it. And if you're thinking about freshwater fishing, trout, pickerel, crappie to start the new year or with the final days in 2023, Jenny Ackerman's got a few gift ideas for the sweetwater anglers on your list over at Jersey Hooker Outfitters in Brook with Amanda. 
Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. We're continuing our run here with the holiday stocking stuffers. And today we're at Jersey Hooker Outfitters in Brick with Amanda. And Amanda's gonna show us some freshwater stocking stuffers. Hi, so my name's Amanda. Um, so I really like these Booyah Pond Magic for around here because the water's not very deep, but it works great for largemouth bass. Also, these uh, Rapala jerk baits, the uh, Shadow Wrap series, they're awesome. Um, I've caught pickerel, bass, um, also crafty on there. Um, there's also the Power Bait Max Scent Berkeley, they are great for bass. The Gary Yamano, you can't go wrong with. The Sankos, always are popular for bass. Um, rooster tails are great for bass, perch, pickerel, crappies, even trout. Same thing with the power bait, extra scent um, dough. And then these are great, Strike King, uh, Mr. Crappies for crappie. So you have a wide variety here to choose from at Jersey Hooker Outfitters. Everything salt water, they have clothing, they have fresh water, a ton of rods. So definitely stop in, get yourself some stocking stuffers fresh water and salt water, and come say hi to Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. No problem. We'll talk TOG in just a minute or two with rigging advice from fisherman author Frank Mahalik. But first, let's figure out if there's a place and an idea on where we can use some of those sweetwater lures that Amanda recommended. A quick update from our friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the rains and flooding have had a huge impact on fishing over the region here. Uh, lots of streams and the rivers are way up, water flows are way up. Uh, so it's really putting a damper on a season that is already slow this time of year. So not a whole lot happening. I did have one guy check in, uh, my good friend Rich Bates. He's been out getting uh, quite a few of those muskies up on the Lackawaxen and he managed to hit the river again uh, right before the rains hit uh, over the weekend, managing himself a nice little muskie to, to, to land in the boat. So good work there, Rich. Uh, guys, I'm hoping after New Year's here, we start talking about a little bit of ice fish, but we got to get the weather to cooperate. I've been checking around. There's not a whole lot of ice to be had anywhere even with a couple of these cold nights. So we'll see how that happens after New Year's. But you guys get out and have a great holiday. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. From the Pocono Mountains to the Pacific Coast of Costa Rica, which is where I'll be as soon as this season is over. Let's check in with Captain Ben, jackpot sport fishing at a Marina Pez Vela in Capos. Guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore from here in Costa Rica, Jackpot Sport Fishing and the Marina Pez Vela. Wishing you all a very happy holiday season, guys. Down here in Costa Rica, the sun is shining. There's no snow down here, guys, and the fishing is awesome. So right now, I'm, I'm shouting you guys from 20 miles out in the Pacific Ocean. On our trip today, we've had a big, nice sailfish and 15 beautiful Dorados in the 15 to 25 pound range. Really, really nice fishing at the moment, guys. We had some striped marlin around the 60 to 150 pound range, some blue marlins as well, and a really nice yellowfin tuna bite in the last week or two as well. Just in the last few days, we had some good news. There's been some nice rooster fishing along our beaches, lots of small to mid-sized fish, so really pleased to see the roosters turn up as well. Happy holiday, guys. This is Ben Gilmore. Please come down and see us very soon at the Marina Pez Vela. Back to you. So if you're still looking to fill a slot or two on your Seven Fishes Feast this weekend, don't forget Black Sea Bass and Porgy will be out of play again as of January 1st. I know on a lot of wish lists that I've seen, and I've been going through, boy, I've been going through a lot of these wish lists. Uh, a lot of you have asked uh, for some type of colonic irrigation at the federal level there at NOAA Fisheries. But once again, 
That's something that uh, even Santa's elves, uh, they won't even touch. They won't put that together. That said, there are plenty of party and charter boat options still operating from North Jersey down uh, all along the coast into Delaware at Lewis and Indian River Inlet. I know boats like the Jamaica 2 out of Brielle down a couple of days this week because of the heavy heave, but they're back at it again. They've been uh, they've been doing some some double headers, black sea bass and uh, and, and porgies as well. Uh, nearby on the Big Jamaica, Sean Layton reported double headers and a full boat limit trip this past Friday, some 70 miles east of Brielle. He said, quote, beautiful roaster sized sea bass to six pounds. Blackfish or totog, of course, that's a fishery that anglers in New Jersey and Delaware can enjoy into the new year and beyond. That should be available to everybody into February, right? Uh, the Lewis Harbor Marina. Uh, annual tog tournament that produced a rather beefy fish this season for Philip Bandy, who took the top prize for a 19 pounder. Uh, and regrettably, he caught that really early in the tournament, which affected participation. 19 pounders, a tough one to try to go after. Um, now, outside of the tournaments themselves, um, and I, I like that one that wrapped up this past Friday, I still see reports uh, of plenty of teen sized blackfish being released to fight and breed another day. Kudos to you. Um, that's really kind of important for this tog fishery. Again, pick up that January edition of the Fisherman Magazine that's out this week. Frankie Mahalik's article on your personal best blackfish. That starts on page uh, 32. And of course, there's a great how-to video that Frank did for us last year. We did that together at the uh, Philadelphia uh, Fishing Show out in Oaks, PA, on how to tie the Belmar rig um, Frank produced that for the uh, for the Fisherman magazine. He alludes to it in the article. So if you want to tie the Belmar rig, hang on for just a moment. I've got that full how-to feature coming up. But first, let me wish you the very best this holiday weekend. It's a joyous time of year for family and friends. I pray that all of your Christmas wishes come true, but especially important is health and happiness. God bless. And uh, hey, listen, don't forget the cookies uh, Sunday night into uh, Monday morning, but uh, maybe a little touch of Coquito for the big man this year, huh? Just a little taste of something, you know, before he jumps back in that sleigh and flies off into the night. Take us out, Frankie. Ho, ho, ho! I constantly field questions about blackfish rigging and I'm very concerned about blackfish failure points. We often talk about the Belmar rig and it's very often confused with what a Belmar rig actually is. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes today and show you how to do that. We're gonna start off tying a slider rig. Everybody Snell's hooks their own way. Whatever works for you, however you Snell it is just fine. For a slider rig, I'm gonna put the hook straight down and it's gonna nest just perfectly like that. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna tie a perfection loop. I usually like my rigs to be about 14 inches long or so in our area in Cape May. If there's a whole lot of current, I'll shorten that up to maybe 10. If there's less current, maybe I'll go up to about 16. So this is the slider rig, or you could use a single hook rig, whatever is more comfortable for you. So the Belmar rig is actually a way to connect your leadered hook into your main line for black fishing. It's an extremely strong connection uh, with no hardware. You start off with a, a section of double line like this, and you can make this section of line between like 12 inches. If you're in a really sticky, nasty piece, I might make this six feet long if I'm dropping down inside of a barge or something. For most cases, I'm gonna make this about a foot and a half long. I'm gonna go up here to the top, and I'm going to tie a two-turn spider hitch. I'm gonna go around two fingers, then I'm gonna go around one finger, and then I'm gonna drop the end of the double line back through itself. It's just a really short two-turn spider hitch. You could also do a double surgeon's loop if you want right there, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hang our sinker from it. 
and this is to keep both legs of this double line perfectly even we want them to be very even and straight we don't want one a little bit longer than the other because that will cause this to kind of loosen up a little bit and then when you're dropping your weight to the bottom sometimes the weight the bait will come up here and get between the legs of the belmar rig so we don't want that so so far so good next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our slider rig into this double line so i'm going to fold the double i'm normal, traditionally i'm going to come up four fingers I'm going to fold that double line over. I'm going to take my slider rig or single hook or whatever you want. And I'm going to take this folded double line and I'm going to put it right through the perfection loop on my, on my rig hook. I'm going to take my hooks, pass it through the loop at a double line. I'm going to snug that up a little bit. Then I'm going to take my sinker and my double line and I'm just going to tie two overhand loops around the snelled hook. I'm gonna crank on it a little bit, get it nice and tight, make sure everything's locked in. If it doesn't lock in nice and straight, you can just pull that leader hook. It sticks out real nice at a 90 degree angle. And that is your Belmar rig. The first time I ever saw the Belmar rig was on the bow of the Big Mohawk 3 when Gary Fagan ran the boat. This was going back some time. This was going back to like 1990. And I was fishing on the boat with a store-bought blackfish rig, swinging and missing all day long. And there was an older fella that worked in the galley. His name was Stan. Stan was legend in my eyes, man. He was up on the bow, fishing a sidewinder. I'm looking at him like, what is this stuff? And he's smoking the blackfish. After a couple hours of him seeing me, I'm kind of watching him and I'm practically in tears now because I can't catch anything and he's got full buckets. And Stan looks at me and he goes, hey, you going to catch anything today or what? And I'm like, man, I don't know. Evidently, I'm just going to watch you catch fish all day. And he goes, well, you need a hand? I'm like, yeah, I really could use some. So next time he pulled the anchors in, he came over, he looks at my rig like this. I'll never forget it. He looks at my rig and he goes, oh, this is your problem. And he goes, huh? He, ch he chops through the Andy Pound 30, the 30 pound stuff, and he, he pulls it away and he goes, oh, this is your problem. We're gonna rig you up like this. And he, and he ties the overhand knot and he comes down, he takes his sinker, puts a sinker on, and he pulls out one of his rigs and he ties it on for me. But at the time we were using a tandem bottom rig. And he goes, all right, let's see what you do now. And now drop it to the bottom. Now don't set the hook on the little taps, wait for the big tap. And I said, okay. And I really listened to him and I started catching some fish. By the end of the day on the way in, he said, hey, you did a lot better. He said, are, are you ever going coming back again? I said, yeah, I'll be back next Wednesday. He goes, well, I'll be here too. He said, I'll bring the coffee, you bring the donuts and I'll show you how to tie the rigs. And I said, great. And that guy Stan meant more to me than I can ever imagine.